Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Bianca Velasky, and I have Tommy Lackey Jr. on the line. He's founding partner and CIO of Barber Lackey Financial Group. Tommy, how you doing this morning? I'm doing well, guys. How are y'all doing? Thank you very much for having me on this morning. Uh, we're doing good. Warming up here, getting almost to 30 degrees, so we're happy about that. Uh, Give us a little bit about your education and background in the markets. Um, well, my market and education and market background and all that, I started out on the financial side, more on the advisor side of things, um, and then unfortunately had to sit through 1999 and all of that as my first uh, awakening. So from there, I basically dug in to find out who didn't lose a bunch of money in that downturn, and it turned out that nine out of ten times it was a technician. Oh, so, okay. Right. So I went, I went that route, started developing what I, uh, what I do and how I want to do it, and you're kind of seeing the culmination of it now. Okay, so you, you have your way about going about things, and uh, you like to look at the markets, and uh, you have um, your RS movers. Can you tell us uh, how you come up with them and what some of yeah. them are? This is basically a uh, proprietary relative strength calculation that I developed about 10 years ago um, that, that takes some similarities from other relative strengths out there. But instead of it being a longer term, mine is more of a, mine is a three month measurement. And so what it allows me to do, it allows me to really uh, ferret out things that are moving differently than the overall markets. Um, more for swing to position trading, whereas a lot of people will use relative strength for their long term commitments. Um, so it's just a different uh, angle on how to use those calculations, and it's within whatever universe I, I use. So the RS Movers is on a universe of 500 stocks, the larger stocks in many of the sectors I follow, and then I run that each night to figure out which one of those, which thing being, being ranked 0 to 99, which one of those moved more than 20 or 25 points in the last five-day period. That lets me know there's some change going on. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a lasting one, but at least it it, it uh, points me to the areas I might want to take a quicker look at and start, you know, moving to the chart, which is really the important part. Why? How did you come up with a three month uh, three month time frame? I am a. I kind of make the joke with a lot of my friends that I'm kind of like the mini mad scientist. I got a hold of this technical software and I started playing with it, and I ran about every different variation you could possibly think of. And I didn't have, with the type of tactical trading I was doing back then, I couldn't find the edge I needed with the six month and 12 month and beyond relative strengths that everybody else was using with sector rotation. And so basically I ended up finding my best success with the three month, because again, it's not the relative strength that's making me make the decision. All that's doing is pulling it out of the crowd. Okay. The chart's really what's going to decide. And uh, do you use it for both long and short positions? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. I don't. I, if I do short positions, it's almost always um, in an inverse ETF or in puts. I don't do any uh, margin-based shorting just because I think in shorts I typically need to be in and out a lot quicker. So it's just... I'd rather have those other tools. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to some of um, the individual stocks that you have on uh, your relative strength movers. Let's start with uh, some of the bullish ones. Okay, um, some of the ones that I, I think are well worth looking at. Um, some people might already uh, obviously have these on, but you have uh, CRM, I believe, is one that's been on that list, obviously, with its surge a week or two ago. It's something we certainly ought to take a look at. However, when you see a three-day pullback like this that reverses, yesterday probably would have been a slightly better entry for the short-term guy. But when you see something like that that reverses, that's a very classic swing trading. And so if we can get a higher high today, then that's a sign to basically, that's an old uh, swing trading entry sign. And so it gives us an opportunity there. Um, also, there's a good bit of call activity. I'll look at open interest, things like that, to see if there's stuff I want to, uh, to focus on there. Okay, so that stock already had that's there. One. Did you play it in the earnings? Do you play stocks in the earnings? <sighs> you know, I did that for a while, but I do not anymore. 
Um, rarely, I find that the edge. I don't. I don't get the edge I want. Even though you can get the IV and all of that, what I run run into is that you got to make the position so small to make them risk effective. Um, that basically, uh, almost I almost feel playing the reaction is better unless I play the run up. You know, a lot of times in options, I'll play a two, couple weeks before and play the run up so that by the time we actually hit earnings, I can have all my premium out if possible. You know, if things work well, I have all my premium out. And so I'm just kind of working with house money on the earnings play. Okay. All right. So uh, what else is on uh, your RS Movers bullish okay. radar? Um, do you want me to throw out a few or just one at a time still? Um, um, one other? Let's throw out a few and then we'll see if we uh, come to like a popular one here or something okay. that's trending. I got uh, MDVN. Okay. Motivation. Um, yesterday, interestingly enough with the news today, Citigroup was on there. Okay, let's talk about Citigroup. I uh, got an upgrade today coming into a resistance level. What are you, what are you looking at in Citigroup? Well... The way Citigroup looks to me is it's one of the areas that it's already moving up into this 54 level. So I think you kind of have to wait till it clears it um, at this point, the way it the way it's uh, surged as it is. But again, it's one of those to where I have a lot of different people that follow me that will do look at these to where this might have shown up yesterday, but they'll keep it on a list for a week or so and see if maybe it settles around that 52, 53 area and then uh, then resets up. So, you know, right now, my opinion, because I do a lot of RSI work as well, that's where my momentum-based side usually comes in. Um, it just recently moved over, uh, RSI on the daily moved over 60, and the uh, it also is on my nitrous list, which basically means that the 9 SMA of RSI moved over 60, which is an acceleration signal. So I would not be surprised if it kept moving. But it is one of those that you kind of have to play two different ranges right now. You have to be either over 54 or probably closer to 52.50 to okay. enter. Okay. Uh, let's see what um, some other stocks here that are on your radar. Uh, huh? big, big, buy, uh, big news in Best Buy today. Is that something that you are active in? You know, I did see it. I'm not active in it right now. I saw the news. You know, I'm, I'm one of those people that, uh, especially with something like electronics, I know a decent amount about them. And... Uh, it always worries the crap out of me because our margins are so terrible. So uh, that's one of the areas that I'm a little more cautious on it. You know, with the way it looks, again, it has to make it over 40 to get much action unless you're a type of trader that likes to play the, uh, the run-up, and then you could probably pull it over about, I guess that's around 39.50-ish if it clears that little area trying to anticipate the breakout. You know, I'm of the opinion that there are a thousand ways to skin a cat and trade. So I don't want to say anybody's is better than anybody else's. You just have to be prepared for what you're going into. Okay. Uh, a lot of bad news out on uh, Alibaba. Is that hmm. something that you've been active in since the IPO? Or? You know, I had a client in it. Um, we got in it fairly early, got a good portion of the run up, and then started kind of. Uh, putting some covered calls on it and things like that to uh, until we got stopped out. Um, but I have really no urge on it until uh, until I see it, you know, basing some. And I'm not really that interested. I have too many longs that are still working for me to be looking for a whole lot of shorts yet, um, especially with the breadth work I do and things like that. A short has to be extremely compelling and i feel like this one i've already missed a lot of it so i probably wouldn't be chasing it down here okay we've got a stock uh, coming out of the chat here cmp is that something that's ever cross uh, crossing any of your filters oh yeah i mean the the universe i use for my larger for my nitrous scan is a 3000 stock filter um so i get most things that come through the only the only real criteria on my filter i believe is around 50,000 in uh shares traded a day and they have to be optionable. Now, it doesn't mean they have liquid options, but they have to be optionable. And those are the only two criteria in my universe. So this is definitely in there and I've had it come up on some. Um, it's not, has not been on it recently. Um, it's not in the RS movers and it has not hit the nitrous scan since the surge back in uh, right at the beginning of the year, but it's a great looking chart. Yeah, I mean, it sure is. Uh, that's one of the things that I have, a, that I'm very, uh, I I have a very good uh, view there is that, that visualization I, I just really enjoy. And when I got into charting, that's what really caught me. And so I, I can look at charts very quickly and have a, 
template that allows me to look at all views in one shot multiple levels and all that and so any chart you want to look at i'm happy to uh, okay well let's rapid fire through here some of these stocks and uh mankind uh mnkd uh you know biotech i i guess you can call it huh? runs and you know runs and declines uh with the news here uh just giving us a quick look at the daily chart here it looks like we got some good support at 650 well you looked like it but it's down at six right now is it trading so down? Uh, yeah, it's it's it uh, got dumped this morning on a downgrade. I believe it was Golden Sachs. I think uh, Joe Kunkel from Options Hawk mentioned that earlier. I'm not positive that was him, but I should have um, looked. I should have looked at the intraday chart before but, uh, I pulled up the daily chart. Then, huh? But well, that six actually is a decent support. <laughs> but you got to let it. Uh, you got to let it sit there for a minute. You know, the thing that disappointed me about this one is that it did not uh, hold over that seven and a half eight area. How quickly it, uh, it pulled rebelled. back from there. Okay. Right. Um, I am a huge biotech fan, don't get me wrong. I mean, extremely huge and think it is a game changer still. Okay, uh, Palo Alto Networks, uh, we had some mm -hmm. consolidation, HPQ buying Aruba Networks here. Uh, mm -hmm. This stock has been on a tear, uh, looking for it to continue. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it can, but I don't know how to enter here. Okay. You know, it's just not my game to enter here. Again, I'd have to kind of see. I think these are worth waiting a little bit, and I think you got a lot of plays in the area with FireEye and CUDA and some of these others. So I think you can. I think they're going to set up at different times, and you can kind of rotate in and out of the different ones. But I definitely think the uh, space is going to stay hot for a long time. Okay, uh, Micron Technology. That's a stock uh, that's uh, in the news quite a bit. Uh, What's mm. your uh, anything? Is that in any of your clients' portfolios or your portfolio? No, no. Actually, semiconductors as a whole are, um, but I chose and I do a lot of ETF work and things like that because in uh, in my experience, I've found especially for clients' money. With a lot of my clients, I I manage the bulk of their money, and so I try to keep it in a uh, traditional portfolio, but more tactically managed. So I am an SMH, have been for a while, um, and I basically. Uh, I believe there's still more here. Um, again, I just think it's it's an area that is changing so quickly. You're seeing a lot more advancements than people are uh, recognizing or uh, acknowledging. Okay, uh, stuck out with some decent earnings, not great guidance. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods, DKS. Yeah. Um, you know, looking at Dix, it's right up there in that area. It did break out. It's really got to hold this because it didn't get all the way above. It got out of the daily breakout, but it didn't get above those weekly numbers from uh, basically early last year. Uh, that's still a little concerning. If it's going to break out here, it needs to get up there and hold that. Or I think we we could see a pullback even below days, today's numbers and maybe come back down to that 53 area -ish, where you see actually a larger support if you go back a longer term and look into the uh, – 2013 14 area before it had that minimal move um again the space i'm not a big fundamental guy um however i'm a big sports guy <laughs> oh yeah and do and then do like playing outside with my kids and doing a lot of that and so i think it's still a good space and i have a, I, I think that you know the nikes of the world the athletic apparel all that again is changing so much with technology i just don't think people would uh, see right now how much ch technology is changing every industry and that's a good bit of why we are where we are right now. Okay, uh, another one I haven't taken a look at in a while. Ambarella Inc., A-M-B-A. <sighs> you know, had a client that asked me to sell some puts for her back, and I was able to, at some point, I was able to catch that recent low. Right on it, had a wonderful day, was very excited about it. <laughs> and then uh, within like three days, those things went worthless. And then I've just been waiting and waiting, and it just does not seem to want to come back. Um, so that's kind of unfortunately where I'm sitting is that I uh, love it. I think it's a great chart. Uh, the breakout would still be worth because it's daily. RSI is just now moving back over 60. It's held its RSI bull range, which is a very important factor in my analysis. Um, the weekly is in a strong bull range doing RSI positive reversals. Again, all these are signs that say that the momentum is still up, definitely, even with this volatility we're seeing. And uh, why why would the client want to you know why don't they want to like buy the stock or, or, or it's buy it's calls? a particular 
yeah. it's a large client of mine, a very very particular person and how, and that's just how they've always done it is they want to they want to enter everything. They Cheaper. basically they want to get paid to get entered everything to enter everything. And they're fine if they don't get in it because they just we just re up it when when we feel like it. Really? And so yeah. I mean, it's it's just one of those. It's just the way they do things, you know. I don't have many clients that I allow to do that because most of my portfolios are models. But this one is a very special situation, and they do a very good job. I just want you to know that uh, from one of our uh, chatters here, they're saying this guy is great and a great person to follow on to stock twits. So uh, throwing all these charts at you, uh, the, our chat room is liking it, uh, loving it actually. We really appreciate you coming on. We got Tommy Lackey Jr., founding partner and CIO of Barber Lackey Financial Group. Uh, before we let you go, just final thoughts at the market made old taunt new. All-time high close yesterday in the S&Ps, backing off a little bit today, low volatility environment. Any final words of advice for our listeners? Yeah, I write a, a complete report every weekend that combines the entire breadth of the whole stock market and the relative strength of, with my calculations. And I put those two into a analysis that allows me to kind of see where things are on a macro view. Um, right now, we have a lot of broad strength. There's no doubt about it. So I expect most pullbacks to be short and sharp. Um, if they do start growing larger, um, we will obviously see that in the breadth first and we'll start reevaluating. But right now, you have the right sectors leading. You have the right segments of the market leading, growth versus value, um, small versus large, when you start looking and breaking these down on a relative strength basis. So it's really hard to argue. Um, you should always be prepared for pullbacks, but you prepare for those in two ways. One, by making sure you have your risk management plan, but two, by making sure you have your buy list too when the market's this strong. And I think right now we have to stick with that until the market proves a little more that the uh, the bears have a uh, have an edge and after them having the sideways move through most of December and January they had that edge the last two months and a lot of people don't want to or for two months in a row and a lot of people don't want to recognize that so I think we still have good potential but I'm always looking for a change Okay, you have your plan and you're sticking to it. Tommy Lackey, Jr., founding partner and CIO of Barber Lackey Financial Group. Thank you. We'd certainly like to have you on again. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. I'd love to do it.